that was an interesting first day. Time to head home and... Hello? Hello, Mr. Kid. Your Megazord is ready. My what? Your Zio Megazord. Yeah, it's ready to be picked up. Oh, okay. The usual meeting spot? Actually, it's a different meetup spot this time. I'll send you the location. Ah, all right then. Please do. No problem. See you at the meeting spot in half an hour. See you soon. Wait, half an hour? What? Hello? Well, gotta go. Hello. Yeah, thanks man, take care. <sighs> I should probably stop recording at night. <laughs> And now, live from the red carpet, we have... I'm sorry, Kip, what are we looking at? I believe that's his feet. Where's the rest of the figure? It's out of frame. How am I gonna announce this guy if we can only see his legs? Fine, we'll announce him on the floor. On the... F I am a professional. If there is no red carpet, I will not be announcing this guy's intro. Where are you going? Call me when you have something that fits in frame. You only have one line. And here we have the Zio Megazord on the turntable along with his accessories. Where are his accessories? It's on the floor. It's on the floor. What a joke. And here are his accessories. So before we get into this figure, let's fix something in his Zio area. First, you take the Zio Ranger 4 bull head and plug it into place. Now he looks better. So, as usual, We'll be taking a look at his possibilities first, his accessories second, then I'll let you know what I think of this figure. His head is on a ball joint. He can look up that far and look down that far. Every ball joint can be a swivel. Minimal butterfly joint. A hinge joint on the shoulder pads. Arm moves out. Ratchet joint rotation at the arm. Bicep swivel, a so called double jointed elbow, his arm is on a ball joint, wrist swivel. Be careful because he has a tight waist swivel. He may not be able to bend forwards, but he sure can bend backwards. No Zio spread, but he can kick up that far and kick back that far. Is this a Zio spread? Upper thigh swivel, single jointed knees. Here's another look. A hinge joint at his feet, which allows it to move back that far, move forward that far. And thankfully, we still have that signature ankle pivot, even though it's a minor pivot. So, now we got that out of the way, let's take a closer look at his accessories. Here's the Zio Ranger 1 helmet. The helmet's cannon is on a hinge joint. Here's Zio Ranger 2 Yellow's helmet. Both blasters can move 360. Here's Zero Ranger 3 Blues helmet. Zero Ranger 4 Greens helmet. Last but not least, Zero Ranger 5 Reds helmet. Putting the helmet on is simple. You line them up and push it down. Taking them off is simple. And repeat the same process for the others. Zero Ranger 2's helmet is a bit tight, but removing it is easy.
He also comes with his wings. Look at that nice gold detail. To put them on, you have to line the pegs into the four holes on his back and push them in. The wings does not hinder the articulation, but it only hinders the 360 articulation. And now he has his wings to fly. Last but not least, he also comes with his sword, which easily slips into his right arm. Guess it wasn't that easy. And here you have the Z Omega Zord ready for battle. Now that we have seen what the Z Omega Zord can do, and the accessories he comes with, all I can say is, the payday and the sculpting of this Zord is more phenomenal. Almost every single detail is painted and raised. The shiny gold paint used was spared no expense. Better articulation compared to the deluxe version from way back when. But I do however miss the gold chrome on the deluxe version. Now I was too young to remember watching Power Rangers Zeo when it first aired on Malaysian TV. But I do however love the suit designs of the Rangers. But I can't give Hasbro too much credit as this figure does have some flaws of its own. Highly poseable figure? Get out of here! Yes, it does move much better than the glorified bricks of the deluxe version. But in those bricks' defense, they had a transforming gimmick. And figure technology was not as advanced as today's technology. So why does this figure feel like a half-ass attempt at making something that could be more phenomenal. It's like they worked so hard on the upper half of the figure but gave up at the 80% mark and forgot to give it a spread. The spread is important in order to make the figure pose as dynamic as possible because without it, you just have an awkward poseable Zord that can only sit down or be in a fetal position. Yes, we have the thigh swivel but due to the nature of the bulky legs, they hinder the articulation. All in all, this Zord is a step in the right direction in terms of making a posable Megazord. But please, Hasbro, make the next Megazord have spreadable legs. Otherwise, what's the point of calling it highly posable? It'll end up being a giant paperweight. I would like to think that if we would have gotten a legacy version of this Zord, it would have this amount of quality of detail and paint. But then of course, this is just my opinion. The top half of this figure is perfect. You can pull off and recreate almost every single scene as you've seen on the show. So the only thing this figure is lacking is the spreadable legs. Oh, here's my legacy builder figure, Zeo Megazord. Guess I'll get my share of spreadable legs here. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Once again, special thanks to Jasmine Yin for lending me her voice. You can check out her channel in my featured channel section on my channel and also in the description below. So please leave a like if you liked this review, subs if you loved it, comment down below to let me know your thoughts, and share this video. This is KID Underman and I'll see you guys next time on the next figure review. Maybe I'm being a little too harsh on this guy, but I want my spread.